Senator, congratulations to you. I know you persisted alongside many in the veteran community to make this happen, but it sounds like already you have concerns that the Royal Commission framework may not live up to your hopes. Just take us through your concerns. Yeah, I don't think it's just living up to my hopes, it's living up to everybody's hopes out there. Um, you know, uh, they put a statement out last night, uh, the, the Prime Minister's Office and uh, Veterans Affairs, in saying that um, Darren Chester himself, who will be under the microscope at the Royal Commission in his department, will be leaving the consultation in terms of reference when it comes to the Royal Commission. Who does that? That. So right now I've got some very, very angry veterans out there that are fuming already. We haven't even got to the 24-hour mark of when this was announced yesterday. What stupidity to put Darren Chester in charge of it, the own Minister of the Department of Veterans Affairs, in charge of running around with those terms of reference inside his little group there. We've seen it all. That's why we're going to a Royal Commission, because the same people he has sitting at those service, those round tables, those service organisations, they haven't had anything to do with us for years. So he needs to give that out to the experts outside of Parliament to people that actually understand law, which is not Minister Chester, and it is not the Department of Veterans Affairs, as you will see going through this Royal Commission. That's the first problem that they have. So there you go. We already have a deficit of trust or a deficiency in trust going on out there in the veteran community. And if you were trying to build that yesterday, PM, anything that you built up yesterday just went straight out the door within 24 hours. So right now, that's Senator, just to clarify, do you have standing. a problem with Darren Chester as, as the minister or is it merely the fact that he does oversee that Veterans Affairs Department, which, as you point out, will be under the spotlight? He is connected. This is not independent. We want those terms of we want the terms of reference looked at independently from experts. Darren Chester and Department of Veterans Affairs are not an expert. They are the ones that are going to be heavily, I can tell you what, they are going to be smashed in this Royal Commission. Why you would pass it over to him to do this is beyond us. So that's where we're at. You said that uh, these people, the, the Veterans uh, Department, hasn't been in touch with you and, and the supporters that you've been working with for years. We actually spoke with the Veterans Affairs Minister, Darren Chester, last hour, and he did talk about how some veterans have been really reluctant to take advantage of the various services offered to them through the government. Why is that? Is that clear to you? I can tell you why they're not sitting at those roundtables, those service organisations that should be representing us, because as soon as they go out and they... they they give Veterans Affairs what for, they're not asked back again. So all you've got at those Veterans Roundtables are a complete pack of noddies that do not work for us out there in the community. That's the first problem that you have. And the reason they're not picking up on those services, Mr Chester, is one, it's taking them weeks to get into even open arms to get psychological treatment. It's taking them months to get in to see psychiatrists. And let's not even go, it's taking 18 months to get claims through. So, you know, I think it's time that Darren stood back, let this go through, took those terms of reference out there to the legal people in the community that know what they're talking about, the ones that are experts in this field, and that Darren Chester moved back and mind his own business now. The only time I want to hear from Chester from here on in is at a Royal Commission, him and his department. You mentioned Open Arms. Late last year, we learned that calls to that organisation, one of the federal government's support services for ADF personnel and veterans, doubled after the release of the Brereton report into those alleged war crimes we've all heard so much about, especially lately. Do you know if the handling of that report did have adverse mental health impacts? Was there actually a spike in veteran suicides after that report? Did the release of that report cost lives? Um, it is what I, I have heard from that community um, from within Western Australia and obviously the commandos out there. The harm, I can tell you now, I'll probably speak more to the families um, than what I, I do to those men um, uh, here from here on in. And I can tell you now the harm that it's caused to those families over there has been atrocious and their children. Uh, the impact that it's had on them, the way this has been handled, has been atrocious. Even taking that unit citation away from them or threatening to do that, from the CDF, um, the impact that had alone on those men. Don't forget, you've got to remember, these men have had multiple rotations. Some have spent five plus years in those war zones. It's been absolutely atrocious in itself. So to blame everybody else 
because the behaviour of half a dozen is absolutely the poorest thing I have ever seen. It's not the Australian way. This is not the way to treat them. I can tell you now uh, what I'm hearing is that they did not get the welfare that they should have got through that report while that report was going on and while they were collect, trying to collect the so-called evidence. Uh, I'll be finding out a lot more. You'll hear a lot more about this from me over the next three or four months as I'm going in with more questions. And there are a lot of un 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 questions that are unanswered when it comes to that Brereton report, and I think it's going to come back to um, bite them very, very hard.